When you hear a dangerous cargo, most probably you imagine explosive or a toxic goods. But what if I will tell you that one of the most dangerous cargo for a seaman is a dry cargo that may liquefy, such as bauxite or a nickel ore, resulting in a capsizing or sinking in a minute's notice. Nickel ore carriage represents just 600% of world trade, but has resulted in 80% of deaths at sea during the last 10 years. Today I will explain you what is liquefaction, why it's dangerous, how to make contest, what is the main points to check before loading, and show you real story of loading nickel ore cargo on the Philippines. As you can see, channel is newly created, and I will appreciate your assistance. Like, subscribe, and share your opinion in the comments. Thank you. Cargo liquefaction continues to be the greatest reason to loss of life in the bulk sector. In fact, in the last 10 years, the lives of 70 seafarers were lost as a result of five bulk carrier casualties, including four carrying nickel ore and one carrying bauxite. Liquefaction occurs due to high moisture content in the mineral ore cargos, which causes the cargos to liquefy and shift, sometimes at a moment notice, resulting in a capsizing or sinking before crews have time to react. But why, if this cargo is so dangerous, it still continues loading in huge volumes? Because nickel ore play a very important part for reproducing batteries and stainless steel. And you can't imagine our world without it, everyone need it. Cargo that may liquefy is shipped at moisture content in excess of transportable moisture limit, such as mineral ores and mineral concentrates related to Group A cargo of IMSBC code. All procedures before loading, instructions for sampling and testing are described in IMSBC code and should be followed. In the description you will find some link for the official documents for your references, here only short brief. Before we proceed, you should understand main abbreviations. Flow moisture point is a percentage of moisture at which a granular bulk material becomes fluid. The flow moisture point figure for a cargo is tested in a laboratory during a flow table test. Transportable moisture limit is a maximum moisture content of cargo that is considered safe for transportation in the ships. And actual moisture content of the cargo tested in the laboratory only. TML is calculated at 90% of the flow moisture point or allows a safety margin of 10%. Moisture content, testing and sampling should not be carried out more than 7 days prior to the date of loading. These timings are the mandatory intervals between sampling and loading and must be strictly followed. If it has rained during these periods, further resampling and retesting should be done. Flow moisture point, transportable moisture limit and moisture content you can find in the shipper's declaration, which should be provided to you before loading, together with supporting documents such as a test result from the laboratory. Looks simple, but why still so many vessels lost during passage with this cargo? Because of fake information in the cargo declaration. Take as example Philippines, as the biggest exporter of nickel ore cargo in the world. Laws and regulations are fixed for the loyal huge mining companies. Shippers declaration and laboratory test consist many mistakes and fakes. For example, in the Philippines, P&I surveyor can't send samples to independent laboratory by airplane since it's prohibited by Philippine law. And when samples finally reach destination, vessel is already loaded and sailed. Practically, only visual inspection and contest remain more or less trustable way to check cargo before loading. So, how to perform contest as per IMSBC code? Take a small can. Fill it with a sample of the material, bring it down sharply from a height of about 20 cm, repeat it 25 times. Now we can see how to perform contest in a practical way. We will perform two contests, one with a dry cargo, another one with a wet cargo. So here, after all, you should check for any sign of moisture. Later on, you should remove cargo, no water in the can as well. And if you can break easily, you can safely load this cargo. This one we take as example as a wet cargo. And here you can see like a cargo could be during the rain season. Wet on top, you can't remove cargo from the can. 
100% rejected. I had experience of loading nickel ore cargo on the Philippines, island Homanhon, which situated in the middle of nowhere, almost alone in the ocean. Vessel stayed at anchor few miles away from the beautiful white sand beach and loaded by barges. Ship has been attended by quite professional surveyor who helped to the deck crew and perform contest few times per each barge. I was lucky to load in a dry season and haven't got any problem. But during the rainy season, as per local P&I surveyors, you can reject more than a half proposed cargo before complete this loading safely. Finalize what can be done to prevent liquefaction. Carefully check shipper's cargo declaration and stated moisture content. Only accept the cargo if the actual moisture content is less than transportable moisture limit. Carry out visual monitoring during loading. If there is any indicators of high moisture content, stop loading and seek advice. Trimming the cargo to reduce the likelihood of cargo shift as required by IMSBC code. Conduct contest of samples at regular intervals at loading. Don't forget that you should monitoring this cargo during the voyage. You should perform regular visual check of the cargo surface for any moisture content on the top. And of course you should perform daily cargo hold bilge sounding. Hope this video was useful for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your friends.